Hey guys, this video is going to be all about frequently asked questions involving cooler painting. Uh, if you don't really know what that is, check the description under this video and I'll kind of like explain it in a blurb. Um, most likely if you're on this video, you kind of know what it is. People ask like all the same questions over and over again. Um, so this is just kind of like a one-stop shop for everything. Now if you are looking for a specific topic, what I'm going to do is link the start times to when I start speaking about a certain topic in the description. So if you're looking for information just on priming, go down to the description, look for the priming uh, time, and then click it and it'll bring you right to that part in the video. If you want to just like know everything, then you can watch this from start to finish. A couple things to start off with. Um, one, these things are an investment. So if you know that you're going to be making one, try to plan ahead as far as you can. Um, so you can start buying things early, so you don't have to just buy things all at once. Depending on the quality of things that you use, uh, it could be like 100 to 200. So buy things as early on in advance as you can, and like borrow things from friends and stuff like that if you can. And the second thing I want to say is go look on the Cooler Connection Facebook page. If you don't know what that is, check the description. I'll link it there. Um, there's like 70,000 people on there who are talking about coolers all day, every day. Uh, go on there if you have a specific like subject or like something you want to paint and you need some inspiration. Go in the search bar and type it in and a million things will come up. So check out that Facebook page. And it's in the description below. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is choose a cooler. There's a bunch of different kinds of coolers out there. There's little 8 quart ones and there's big like 60 quart ones. Regardless of size, you want to make sure that you choose a cooler that is as flat as possible. That will make more sense in the coming subjects. But like the more indents and stuff that there are, the more difficult and time consuming the cooler is going to be to paint. Now, most coolers do have indented logos or like grooves in them. And if you want the cooler to be as easy as possible to paint, what you're going to want to do is either bondo or spackle inside the indents. Um, what those are just pretty much just like body fillers and you put them in the logo to make the cooler surface completely flat on all sides So there's no groups and no logos to paint in and around and stuff and making it really difficult Now if you do choose to bondo or spackle do that and try to keep it as flat as possible because the next step is sanding and you would think that you'd be able to sand, bondo, or spackle, or body filler really easily, but it's kind of difficult So if you keep that as flat as possible, it'll make the sanding process easier now sanding uh, people think it's optional, but it's not optional. 110% um, sand your cooler. And what I mean by sanding is taking sandpaper and rubbing it against the sides of the cooler in order to get the plasticky film off. Because if you leave that on, your paint is not going to stick properly. And once it's all done with, it could like chip off and peel and you would lose all the work that you've worked on. So you just want to sand. You should get two different kinds of sandpaper. You should get um, a coarse grit and a fine grit. Coarse, just use first and then fine grit to sand it all out afterwards. You can either use a power sander or sand it by hand. I have done both processes and I actually preferred hand sanding. It doesn't take that long. Um, you can get one of those little sanding blocks. They're like a foam block with sandpaper on all the sides and that makes it really easy. You aren't trying to sand a ton off. You're just trying to get that plasticky film off the outside. The rougher the texture of the cooler, the better the paint and primer will stick. So you don't need to like go crazy. Just like get that first like layer off. And the next step is priming. What you want to do after you sand is use a spray primer so that your paint has something to stick to. Uh, the best kind of primer to use is the Krylon Fusion Spray Primer. I will link all the products that I talk about in the description below for like Amazon so you can get them as cheap as possible. But it's pretty much just like a spray can, like spray paint, but it is a primer so it makes it so that your paint will stick to plastic. And if you want to make everything a little bit easier, then you can take off the handles and wheels of your cooler um, just so that you don't get primer and paint on it from here on out. Um, it is a little bit difficult. You kind of have to use some force and some coolers you can't take them off and some you can. So for something like that, check the cooler connection and like check the kind of cooler that you have to see if people have taken the wheels off of them. Uh, what I did, I kept the handle on and the wheels and I just taped them with painter's tape. So that when I was spraying primer, I didn't get on the tape, and when I was painting, nothing got on the handles or anything. And when you're priming, do about two coats. Um, I had to use two cans for like my pretty big cooler. So yeah, do about two coats so that you get an opaque coverage on all sides of the cooler. Now the next part is when you start getting creative. This is when you have to start thinking about the design that you want. Uh, this is when the cooler connection comes in such handy. Uh, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of photos of coolers that people have done, uh, ranging from like coolers for themselves, for their parents, for boyfriends, fiancés, etc. So like whatever you want to paint, someone will have some ideas to help you out. It's definitely a good idea to plan out your designs beforehand so you just like kind of know exactly what you're doing once you start painting. Now if you check the cooler connection, <laughs> there's gonna be like some crazy 
artistic people in there. But honestly, I cannot draw for my life, but my cooler that I made actually turned out pretty cool and pretty good because I learned the art of tracing. Um, now you can use trace things from your computer and put it like right on your cooler. There's three different ways you can do this. You can buy uh, carbon paper, which pretty much whenever you're writing on the carbon paper, carbon will go onto whatever surface you're on, so like your cooler. Or you can kind of like make your own carbon paper. What I did was I shaded with a pencil on the back of a piece of printer paper and I had my image on the paper and then I just traced over it onto my cooler and the pencil transferred. Or you can use tissue paper and put that over your image like on a computer or something, trace over it and then when you put it on your cooler use a sharpie so that it bleeds through onto your cooler and then you can just go off of your sharpie lines. If you want to make life a lot easier, tracing papers and tissue paper and using things like that really help the process and help your cooler look really really good even if you don't have like a crazy amount of artistic talent. Once you do start painting you need to be using matte Mod Podge in between each layer of paint. It helps a lot whenever you are, you have like your background color and then you're painting a design on there and if you mess up the, the design, having the Mod Podge underneath it makes it easier for you to like erase lines and stuff. Don't do too much though because if you do too much by the end of your cooler you're gonna have so many layers of stuff that it may peel off. So be cognizant of how much you're using but definitely try to use it in between each complete layer that you have on your cooler. Okay once you're all done painting first off congratulations for making it that far because it probably took forever <laughs> and we all feel your pain um, but once you're done painting you want to seal the cooler because if you don't seal it it's going to chip off or rub off or water will wash off your paint and all your hard work will just go down the drain. Um, so what you want to do is seal it with two different things if you really want. First off do, well I guess three things. So first off, do that last coat of matte Mod Podge. If you really want, you can do outdoor Mod Podge. And then you're going to want to use Minwax Polycrylic. That comes in like a teal can. Again, all these products that I talk about will be in the description below. And um, the best kind is the paint on kind. It comes in, again, like a little can. And use that polycrylic. It's kind of like an acrylic top coat. So use that all over. Maybe do like a couple coats of it. And that is enough for most people. But if you want to have a waterproof cooler, then you want to get something called polyurethane and again I will put all these products in the description below so check them out. Use a thin layer of that because if you have whites on your cooler or you have a side that's all white it has a tendency to yellow the white paint that you use so use a very very thin layer and that'll help waterproof your cooler. And there is one other kind of optional step for making a cooler, um, filling the cooler. But some people they like to fill it with um, alcohol, snacks, if you're going to a fraternity's formal, just like stuff that you'll want for that trip, like food and stuff like that. And little trinkets for the person that you're giving it to and things that you think that they would like because um, it's, it's a gift. So the cooler is kind of like the gift box and you can fill it with other gifts inside of it. I also have a blog post that is going to supplement this video so if you want to check that out, just like everything else, it's going to be in the description below. It'll have everything laid out and if you have any questions, feel free to just comment on this video. I will respond to you or someone else who knows a lot about coolers maybe will be watching this and will help you help you out with that. But yeah, I feel like there wasn't really a video out there just kind of explaining the entire process, so I hope this helps some of you guys, and again, if you have any questions, just comment them below, and I'll help you out. Hope you guys all have a good day, and good luck on your cooler making.